out to two passages of scripture, amen. Uh, the first passage of scripture uh, is located in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. That is 1 Corinthians... The third chapter, amen. And then we're going to, when you get there, we're going to have you to turn to Philippians. Philippians. Philippians, the first chapter. Philippians, the first chapter. We'll give you a few, a few moments, amen. Amen. That is, one more time, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Amen. And then we're going to have you swing over to Philippians, the first chapter. Amen. And when you get there, just say amen, amen. And, and if you're able to stand, come on and stand up, amen. Both are found in your New Testament. So one more time. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians, amen, the third chapter. And then we're going to swing over to Philippians, the first chapter. Amen, amen, amen. See some more pages, amen, 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 amen. God is good, amen. And I always say it, amen. If you, got to, if you have to use your index, go ahead and use it, amen. Eventually you'll get there, amen. If you just say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. We're going to first read... Uh, from 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and we're going to read verse 16 and 17. Are you there? Amen. Amen, amen. The Bible reads, Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth yes. in you. Yes, we got to read that slow so it can get down in that spirit. Yes, the Bible says if any man defile the temple of God, yes. mm. him shall God destroy for yes. the temple of God is holy. holy. Which temple are you? <laughs> now we want to concentrate on verse 16 because, because whenever you read the Bible, when the Bible speaks about the temple of God, it's either speaking about the church as a whole or it's speaking about the individual believer. Correct. That's right. Verse 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. <coughs> Amen. Now I want you to turn, matter of fact, matter of fact, let's do it this way, matter of fact. Now Philippians 1 and 6. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6. Are you there? Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Here it is right here. Being confident of this very thing. That he which had begun a good work yes. in you. Yes. Will perform it. Yes. Until the day of Jesus the Christ. The you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, if we were to entitle uh, this message, it would simply be entitled Evidence of a Change. That's right. Amen. Evidence of a Change. Uh, if you recall from the last couple of weeks, it, it may not be in order, we talked about a change of heart. Uh, and then we talked about a change in heart. And then we talked about God in the house. Uh, well, there is always going to be evidence when God is in the house. When God is in the house, God will not just sit there and not do anything. But there is always evidence when God is in the house. You cannot say that God is in the house and there's no evidence of a change. I brought some amens with me. I brought some go ahead and pass go ahead and pass this with me. Amen. Amen. One of the false teachings that continues to hinder God working in the lives of believers 
individually but also collectively is the false teaching that says according to the kingdom of God lifestyle does not matter it does. one of the false teachings and I'll say it again that continues to hinder God working in the lives of believers individually or collectively is the false teaching that says that according to the kingdom of God that one's lifestyle does not matter and because and because of this false teaching there are many believers who have been convinced that in the sight of God that as long as one loves everyone then one can choose to live the life that they desire to live. Yes. You will discover you discover that because of this erroneous teaching mm -hmm. that we find that there are many who are who now believe that in the sight of God and according to the kingdom of God that as long as we treat everybody right well. then one can choose to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to them Amen. not to God that is why that is why we find in, in, in the community of believers. That's why we, 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 we hear so many com comments that, that are contrary to God's word. Yes. That's why that's why in the midst of believers we, we, we hear comments concerning those living a lifestyle that's contrary to the word of God. Comments such as, I know that they live together, but not married. I know you don't have to tell me that, that they're living together, but they're not married. But, but then they follow it by saying, but, but if you ask me my opinion, I decided that if they're happy with it, then I'm going to be happy for them. Oh, can I talk to somebody? I know y'all don't want to hear this. Because many have been convinced that as long as you love everybody, then you can choose any way you want to use your, you live your life. You have many comments going around in the midst of believers such as, I know that they're gay. I, I, I know that they're homosexuals. But, but see, that does not bother me because we still have a good time when we go out. Watch out now, watch out now. Go ahead, Pastor, I'm going to throw that right there. Because many have been convinced that lifestyle does not matter. We, 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 we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. I, I, I know they'll do anything for money. They'll do anything where well, they're still from their mama. They're still from their poor. But then they reply, they reply, but, but, see, but see, that don't bother me. Because they told me that whenever I come up short, I got your back. Oh, watch out now. Watch out now. I got your back. And that is because many have been convinced that according to the kingdom of God, that, that as long as everybody, that as you love everybody, as long as you treat everybody right, then you can live any way that you want to. But contrary to what the world says, Contrary to false teaching, according to the kingdom of God, according to the word of God, yes. and in the sight of God, lifestyle matters. Yes. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 16, be ye holy, yes. for I am holy. That's why the Bible commands us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22, abstain yes. from all appearances yes. of evil. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infamous, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Because I'll say it again, because according to the kingdom of God, according to the word of God and in the sight of God, lifestyle matters. Amen, amen. We got so caught up on black lives matters. The church ought to be harder and lifestyle matters. We ought to get us a little march going on. Lifestyle matters. Ought to call Channel 2, Channel 5, and Channel 7 and say, we got a protest to let everybody know lifestyle matters. We don't have any problem getting a church marching about Black Lives Matter. But I wonder how many folk we can get in the church that march and say, lifestyle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We just going to talk to y'all for a little while. We should have thought of this thing, lifestyle matters. Boy, I tell you something like that. And, 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 so, and so the question is, 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 why does lifestyle matter according to the word of God? Why does lifestyle matter according to the kingdom of God? Why does lifestyle matters in the sight of God? Here it is, here it is right here, y'all. Because one's lifestyle is a strong indicator of not only who is dwelling in one's heart, but it is a strong indicator of who's ruling in a heart. Mm. I'll say it again, I'll say it again, I'll say it again, amen, 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 amen. And I'll say it in the context of this message. The, the reason why, why, why lifestyle matters according to the kingdom of God because according to the kingdom of God, how one lives their lives is a strong indicator of not only who's dwelling in the house, but it is a strong indicator on who's ruling the house. Uh, and, and you will discover, y'all, that whoever is ruling that house will dictate the activities that take place in the house. Oh, can we talk to somebody on today? And, and so lifestyle matters because the way that one lives their lives, it is an indicator on, first of all, who's dwelling in the house. Yes. Come on. It is an indicator on not only who's dwelling in the house, but it is also a strong indicator on who's running that house. Uh, Come on now. Can, can you just stop and ask yourself the question, who's running my house? Who is running my house? Now, we, we got to qualify that. We got to qualify that now because there are some folk that will suggest to you, no, that that, that, that that is not correct. Well, if you recall on last week, the Lord reminded us about how when a, person's con a person confesses with their mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. It is then and only then that by that God by the way of the Holy Spirit will enter into the heart of man and dwell there. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. For the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 13, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him. And he in God. Yes. We also mentioned on last week that, that when the presence of Jesus Christ enters into the heart of man by the way of the Holy Spirit, that God will give that believer the assurance that God is dwelling in the heart. Did we have some rehearers on last week? 
For we were reminded according to Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself will bear witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. One of the things that God will do is when he enters into the heart is he will give us assurance that he is in fact in a house. Amen. But, 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 but not only will God give a believer assurance that he is dwelling in the house but God will also give evidence that he is now ruling in the heart. Because every believer must understand that, that when we open up our hearts and we receive Jesus into our hearts, that we receive Jesus not only as Savior of our soul, but we also received him as Lord of our lives. You can't have him to be a Savior without him not being Lord of your life. But when he came into our heart, he came in not only being the savior of our soul, but also being Lord of our lives. That's why he said over there in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 46, and why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. And so one of the things that God will do is God will not only give us assurance, but then God will give us evidence that not only is he dwelling in our hearts, but that he is now ruling yes. in our hearts. Yes. And one of the methods, one of the methods that God will go about manifesting the evidence that God is not only dwelling in our hearts, but, but now God is ruling in the heart of man is by the way of sanctification. Yes. Y'all remember we talked about that? Yes. One, of the, one of the methods, yes. one of the methods that God will go about manifesting that not only is he dwelling in the house, but now he's ruling in the house is that God will go by the way of the process of sanctification. Now, let me just back up a little bit and I'll show you what it means. One of the blessings that we received, when we received the plan of salvation, we received the blessings of being justified by God. Yes. Mm -hmm. To be justified by God means that God declared us righteous in his sight. It means that once we're, we said yes to Jesus, it means that when God looks at us, he no longer sees our sins, but he sees the righteousness of Christ. Yes. In other words, he clothed us with the righteousness of his dear son. Mm -hmm. That is what it means to be justified. Yeah. Now, you need to understand that when God justified us, that was a work that God did for us. But sanctification is a work that God now wants to do inside of us. And in other words, justification was simply making the house look good on the outside. But now there's some work that needs to be done on the inside. Let me put it this way. In other words, in other words, when, 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 when you said yes to Jesus, guess what, y'all? You didn't start living a holy life. But when you said yes to Jesus on Sunday, right about Thursday and Friday, you were saying yes to your old ways. Oh, I got some smirkers there, but, but I just say go ahead, Pastor. When, when, when you said yes on Monday, guess what? Tuesday, you were still going back to doing the same old things. That is because God did a work for us. But now it's through sanctification that God is going to do a work in us. Oh, can we talk to somebody on today? And, and, so, and so the method that God uses... Mm, to bring evidence in our lives is by doing a work in our lives. Yes. Are y'all following me on this thing? Yes. Uh -huh. 
Here it is. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. That's right. Now there are two points right there. There are two points to the message here. Notice what it says. It says, being confident of this very thing. First of all, first of all, every believer must be confident for themselves that God is doing a work in you. Uh -huh. Can you just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is working in me. God is working in me. Now, now if you believe it, you'll say, I know God working in me. Now, now watch this, watch this, y'all. It's important to believe that for yourselves because, because, because if a believer is going to believe that God is doing a work in them, then you must be confident that God is dwelling in you. Amen. Oh, let me stop right there. Watch this, y'all. Because if you have not reached a point that you are confident that God is in you, then you will not be confident that God is doing a work in you. Oh, I didn't get nothing on that right now. I, I don't think so full confident that God is working in them now. See, see, we, 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 we talk about all the stuff that God does around our lives, but we never talk about the work that God wants to do inside our lives. That's right, that's right. Well, I know, I know. We get up and we get up and talk about how God blessed us with a car. Uh, how God blessed us with a house. How God blessed us with a job. How God blessed us with a house. But wait a minute, what about the how God blessed you in the work that He's doing on the inside? Can we get on the inside? I discover y'all, God works from the inside out. We want to talk about the outside of the house, but we don't want to look on the inside of the house. It's sort of like buying a new house. <laughs> the house looks good on the outside. You invite people to come to see the house, but you don't let them in. You say you can come and see it, but you just can't come in. You can drive past, but you can't come in. Because you know how it looks on the inside. Well, your house may look good on the inside. But God wants to clean it up on, on the outside. But God wants to clean it up on the inside. Can we talk about the inside of the house, y'all? Oh, I, I don't think they're happy because now you start thinking about man, how the inside of my house looks. <laughs> so here it is, y'all. So, so we've got to be confident. We've got to believe for ourselves that God is working a work on the inside of us. But, but, but we cannot get to that place until we're first confident that God is dwelling in our hearts. Because if you miss this, everything else is off. If you get the heart matter wrong, then everything else is not going to click. That's right. and, and so that's why we have to go back to the point here. B because we talk about how God is, is in the heart, but, but here it is, do we believe that God is in the heart? Because when we get to the place of believing that God is in the heart, then we can get to the place in believing that God is doing the work. Amen, amen. In my heart. Uh, Notice then Philippians 1 and 6, it also says, it says that the work, the good work that God has begun, watch this y'all, is not a one night project. That's no. right. Mm. Come on. Say Don't think can. that God is going to come in mm -hmm. and work for one night mm -hmm. and then leave you alone. Mm -hmm. When God begins this work, y'all, it's not a monthly project. <laughs> Don't think God going to stick around for a couple of months and then shoot on out of there. <laughs> This work that God wants to do in our lives, it, it, it's not even a year-long project. Come on. Lifetime. But, but, but it says, y'all, it says that it, he will continue to work until the day of Jesus Christ. As long as we have breath in our body, that is a word that God will do in our lives. Yes. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's still working. He's still working in my life. He, he's still working. Even though I've been in church for 40 years, he's still working. Even though I read my Bible, he's still working. Even though I know how to sing, there is still work that needs to be done. I've been talking to somebody over today. 
So the question is, we talked about believing that God is in the heart. So you see how why that was so critical. Because now we've got to get the point of believing that God is doing a work in our heart. Is God in the house? Is God working in your life? Watch this, y'all. Not working around your life. But is he working in your life? Now, 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 now. Whenever God begins a work, there's always going to be results. Yes. Can we talk to somebody? God will never do a work and never have a result to what he did. Amen. Amen. That's right. God not like us. <laughs> God not like us when we saw something and you, you, you just walk away from it. You say, well, what? Anything come out of it? Ain't nothing came out of it? You just ain't had it. But God is a God that when he begins a word, that, that, that is a re, an expected end. Yes. That is a result that God is looking for to come to pass. Yes. Here are the results. Here, here, watch this show. Watch this. One of the results that will manifest itself in God taking a believer through the process of sanctification is a transformation of the life of the believer. One of the results that will take place in God taking us through the process of sanctification is a transformation of the life of the believer. Yes. The evidence that will manifest as a result of God working in the heart of a man is a life made holy. Yes. Hallelujah. I can stop right there. I can stop right there. The evidence that will manifest in the as a result of God working in the heart of a man is a life made holy. Amen. Amen. One of the changes that will take place as a result of God not only dwelling but ruling in the heart of a man is a life being conformed into the image of Jesus the Christ. Amen. There will always be results that will manifest when God is working. Amen. Now, now, the reason why it's important for every believer to look for the evidence in their own lives is first of all to eliminate any doubt that God is in the house. Amen. It is to eliminate having to look for somebody else to verify that God is in your house. Amen. Can I talk to somebody? How does it look that you always got to ask somebody else who's in your house? But God will give you evidence uh, to let you know that he is not only in the house, but he's working in the house where you don't have to ask somebody every single Sunday, do you see God in me? You don't have to look for somebody to encourage you that they see God in you in order for you to believe that God is working on the inside of you. But God will give you the evidence to let you know that you can decree and declare that God is doing the work in me. I don't need somebody to tell me every single Sunday that God is working with me. I don't need anybody to lay hands on me to let me know that God is working in me. Guess what? Because God will give me evidence in my own life. Some folk don't real feel right unless a certain, certain folk tell them. I see the anointing on you. I see really I see God really using you. Now all of a sudden you feel like you somebody. God said, I've been trying to tell you that since I saved you. Amen. Oh, can I talk to somebody on today? <laughs> the reason why it's important, y'all, watch this, y'all. The reason why it's important, y'all, because watch this, y'all. Be be because there are some naysayers that will tell you otherwise. Amen. There are some naysayers that will suggest to you that, that the evidence of a changed life is not the work of God dwelling in you. Can we talk about some of these naysayers? 
Because you know, they sit around now. Can we identify some of these naysayers? See, these naysayers are, are, are those, those, those folk who've been in church all their life. But because there's no change that is taking place in their life, then they would try to suggest to you that's not evidence of God working in your life. Uh, that's right. Naysayers, naysayers are, are those who even went down in the water to be baptized. Uh oh, uh oh. We're talking about folk that went down uh, one way and came up the same way. We're talking about those that went down the devil and came up. The, oh, y'all not talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. And because there is no transformation that is taking place in their lives, they're trying to convince you that there is no evidence. Amen. Oh, watch out. Now, we're, we're talking about those folk that pride themselves on the work that they do for the church. Yes. You know how it is. Every time they get a chance, they want to tell you what they're doing for the church. They want to tell you how much they bless the church. But watch this, y'all. But because there's no conforming to the image of Christ in their lives, they will try to convince you that is not the evidence. Go ahead, pass it. Go ahead, pass it. Man. They went, they went for go ahead, pass it. Oh. Oh. Make sure I ain't in that naysayer crowd. But when, when God, or when man allows God to not only dwell in the heart, but allows God to rule in the heart, that will be an undeniable evidence yes. that God is doing the work mm -hmm. in the house. Can we talk about the undeniable evidence that will manifest in the believer's life Amen. to let you know that God is not only dwelling in the house, but that God is ruling in the house. One of the reasons why there will be an undeniable evidence that God is ruling in the heart of man is because when God begins to rule in that house, when God begins to do a work in our lives, the first thing that God will do, or one of the things that God will do is God will act as a refiner in our hearts. Yes. Oh, I got to say that again. Amen. When God begins to do a work in the heart of a man, one of the first things that God will do is God will act as a refiner. Mm -hmm. What does a refiner do? A refiner goes about posing all of the impurities and all of the undesirable things out of a place. That's right. Amen. And so one of the works that God will do when he enters in and begin to rule in the heart of man is that God will begin to purge out all of the things that are contrary to God's will in your heart. I'll put it this way. When God acts as a refiner in the heart of a man, one of the things that God will do is God will go about making the heart pure. Mm. Because in order for a man to see God, then he must have a pure heart. Yes. For the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Are y'all looking at the work inside of us? When God begins to work as a refiner in the heart of a man, that simply means that God will go about cleaning the heart of a man because the Bible lets us know that in order for a man to experience the goodness of God in one's life, a man must have a clean heart. Yes. For the Bible says in Psalm 73 and 1, God is good yes, is. to such as are they of a clean heart. Oh, yes. 
Yes. When God acts as a refiner in a man's heart, God will begin the work of cleaning that heart up from anything that's contrary to the will of God. Amen. Now, the second reason why it will become evident that God is doing a work in one's life. The reason why you will not be able to mistake that God is now ruling in your heart mm -hmm. is simply this. If you recall a few weeks ago, we share with you that according to the medical field, that the heart of a man is considered the center life of a man's physical life. That's right. Amen. But then we also share with you that from a theological perspective, the heart of a man is considered the center of the spiritual and the moral life of man. Mm -hmm. And that is because it is the heart of man in which the personality of a man is formed. It is the heart of man in which the attributes of a man are, are formed. It is in the heart of the man in which the emotions of a man are formed and the affections originated. And so you've got to understand one more time that, that in every aspect of life, the heart is the center of a man's life. Yes. Watch the show. Therefore, when God not only dwells in the heart of a man, but when God begins to rule in the heart of a man. It is likened to God moving into our homes and taking up residence in the center of our house. Can I explain it to you like this? Watch this, y'all. Most consider, because of how houses are constructed, that the center of a house is the living room. Most will consider the center of a house or the middle of the house is considered the living room. Does everybody have a living room in their house? Amen. Now, the reason why the living room is considered the center of the house is because it's the living room that has access to all of the other rooms in the house. The reason why the living room is considered the center of the house is because it is in the living room that one has the ability to not only see, not only to hear, but to smell everything that's going on in that house. And so when God moves in and starts to rule and reign in the heart of a man, it's like it to God moving in to our living rooms and taking up residence. And, and I wonder if you can imagine yourself in your house and you discover that God himself has not only moved into your house, but he has decided to take up residence in your living room. Uh, well, well, that would mean to us that every time that we walk through the front door, uh, the first person that we will see is God sitting on uh, the living room couch. Uh, that means, y'all, that every morning that we woke up uh, and walk down the stairs, uh, guess what, y'all? We'll see God uh, sitting on the living room couch. Uh, that means, y'all, uh, that every time that we turn on our TVs, guess what, y'all? We'll see God sitting there waiting to see what we gonna watch on TV. That means, y'all, that every time somebody comes to visit at our homes, guess what, y'all? The first person that they'll see in your house is God sitting on the couch, chilling all day long. That means, y'all, that every time that we give a party, every time that we give a barbecue, every time that we give a get together, guess what, y'all? Guess who's going to be the first guest in your house? It will be God all by himself. Guess what, y'all? I discover, y'all, it's something about being in the presence of the Lord every single day. It's
is something about coming face to face every day of your life. I discover y'all when God is in the house, you will think twice about the way you live. When God is sitting there watching TV with you, you will turn from that pornography and you will turn to some good old Channel 7. I discover y'all when God is in your house, you will watch the conversation that you have on your phone. I discover y'all when God is taking up residence in your house. I guarantee you a whole lot of folk won't come to your house. Come on and give God some praise because there's something about being in the presence of God. Now watch this, y'all. And whenever you are in the presence of God, there is a change that's going to take place. There is a transformation that's going to take place. Because I discover, y'all, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I discover, y'all, where the glory of the Lord is. Guess what, y'all? A transformation will take place. And if God is in your heart, Guess what, y'all? A transformation is going to take place. You will discover, y'all, you will walk a little bit different. You will talk a little bit different. You will sing a little bit different. You will praise on just a little bit different. Yes, Lord. Faith is the substance of things, so forth. The evidence of things not seen. My evidence my evidence does not start when the transformation takes place. Uh, because see, folk are waiting for the transformation to take place. Uh, but my evidence start through my faith. My evidence start from the time that I believe that not only is God in my heart, but that God is doing a work in my heart. And so even before a transformation takes place, I can still shout, thank the Lord, because I know what's about to come. Even before the evidence manifests, I can still say, thank the Lord, because my faith tells me that God is about to do a work in my life. See, a whole lot of folk are looking for the evidence. But your faith is your evidence. Watch this, y'all. Your faith tells you that not only God is in my heart, but God is doing the work in my heart. Watch this, y'all. Because folk are sitting around. They still waiting for the evidence. I'm waiting for the evidence, Pastor. You said the transformation will take place. You said the conforming will take place in my life. Well, well, sometimes it takes God to work a little bit longer in some folk's life. <laughs> but, but, but that should matter. Because your evidence is your faith. That God is not only in the heart. But that God is doing a work yes, Lord. in the heart. Yes. And you will discover in the Bible wherever God began to do a work. Then there was always evidence where I said so. Amen. That not only God was there, but that God would get a result right. from his work. Right. 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 You can't tell me that God is doing the work in your life. If there's no evidence of a change. Amen. That's Amen. That's taking place in your life. Amen. You can't tell me that God's been working in your life for 20 years and you still cussing <laughs> before we got there. You can't tell me that God is working in your life and you're still doing the same things that you did before God came into the heart. Amen. The reason why it's so acceptable in the body of Christ is because many have been convinced that lifestyle just really does not matter. And if lifestyle does not matter, then that means that the work that God desires to do in a man is in vain. Mm -hmm. Because why would God go through all of that to take us to a place of transforming us into the image of God? To living a life of holiness and righteousness if lifestyle really didn't matter. 
In that case, God could have just saved us. And said, y'all go live the way y'all want to live. Y'all go do what y'all want to do. Y'all go live the way that y'all been living. And I'll see y'all when y'all get to heaven. But God didn't stop there when he declared us righteous. God said, now I got to do some cleaning up. Amen. On the inside yes, yes, of you. Yes. The challenge on today, this is where we get to, y'all. God's taking us somewhere. First, we got to believe that God is in us. Amen. First, we got to get to that point. Because if you're not there, you can't get to this next point. Now you got to believe that God is doing good work in your life. Watch this, y'all. Because if you don't believe that he's doing the work, then you will find yourself rejecting the work that God desires to do in your life. If you don't think he's doing the work, then you won't look for the work to be done. That's right. Amen. And if you're not looking for the work to be done, then you will reject anything that comes into your heart that's abnormal. Amen. Because everything that God is about to do in your life, it will be contrary to everything that we learned in our lives. Amen. And so when God begins to do some reconstruction, if you don't believe that he's doing some work, you'll say, oh, this is not right. Oh, this don't belong here. Let me throw it away. And what you're doing is you're throwing the work of God away out of your life. Mm. And so that's why it's important we have to get back to, first of all, I keep saying it. First, believing that he's in the heart. And then believing that the reason he's in the heart is because now he's going to begin a work in your heart. Amen. And the question Amen. is, y'all, watch this, y'all. Folk been saved 20, 30 years. Have you let God do the work that he desires to do? In your life. First thing that God wants to do is. He wants to clean you up on the inside. Amen. He wants to remove all the impurities. All the things that are contrary to God's will. And God's word in your life. Amen. And he'll stop right there in your heart. Because that's the center of your life. It's like it's a God sitting in the center of your front room. And every day you wake up. God is sitting right there. Well, that's how he is when he sits in your heart. Every day you wake up in the morning, guess who's right there? Mm -hmm. God's sitting right there saying, you going to let me do the work that I want to do? Yeah. Or are you going to reject it in your life? Mm -hmm. Come on and give God a hand. Praise him. Mm -hmm.